here we are, off-season training. 2023, coming up pretty quick. I got some weight goals that I'd like to achieve. 155 pounds. And I know what you guys are thinking, like, why 155 pounds? What are you even at right now? I'm at, a, I'm at more than 155 right now. But I picked 155 because I know it's attainable. I know it's something that I, that I can achieve, but it's definitely not gonna be easy. How the hell am I gonna get there? Beats me. That's why I'm going to my boy, Chase Banks, over at Finish First Fitness. He's somebody I've been working with since 2016, and he definitely knows what's up. He knows his stuff. Uh, my name is Chase Banks. Uh, I'm a chiropractor here at Finish First. We offer everything from sports injury prevention, uh, rehab. Uh, we see obviously acute and chronic care. We do a lot of well care. Uh, speaking of well care, we do a lot of nutrition. Our uh, services that we offer for nutrition are, are quite vast, but really what it comes down to is we just do complete customization. And when I came into practice, what we wanted to do is be able to offer something that was kind of unseen and unfound. And that was basically a one-on-one -on -one approach for our patients and create kind of a, a health advocacy approach for them so they can become the best person that they want to be for their goals. We are five, nine. No. Fantastic. You don't like that? All right, five, ten. None of the body's not accurate. <laughs> Garrett's main goal is one, he wants to race at 155. I think it's it's definitely feasible. Um, unfortunately, he may have to sacrifice maybe one max two pounds of lean muscle to get there. We don't want to, we want to sacrifice any more than that because um, it will carry over again to his overall strength on the bike. That, that power to weight ratio is critical. So is it, uh, is it just important to just jump in to get to a number to basically say we got to that number or is it to basically put in the hours on the track, in practice, in training to see, hey, am I better at 157 or am I better at 155? Uh, we'll see. You just breathe, relax, keep your heart rate down. Best of all, to get the best numbers that way. All right. So. It's probably already elevated from all the stuff we're doing. So. <laughs> so today, what we're gonna be doing for Garrett is actually uh, designing a kind of a off-season nutrition and some kind of training uh, modules for the upcoming race season. And starting with assessing uh, Garrett, we're gonna be doing an in-body analysis to check everything for his body composition. We'll also be doing an RMR analysis. We use a Cosmed um, Fitmate, which actually helps us look at his uh, respiratory metabolic rate. And so that we'll know exactly how many calories he needs at his base level and then calculate exactly what all of his training is to figure out both the energy expenditure from all of his exercise, his training, and then how much he needs at rest, and we'll come up with something called a total daily energy expenditure. And then based upon that, if he still wants to kind of drop a little bit and kind of improve his body composition analysis, we're gonna go into a small deficit, and we'll help calculate that all out for him. Out of everything that I own here, everything. It's the most expensive piece of equipment I have. Obviously, there's a computer in there, but it's got this um, air sensor. I don't want to be real simplistic, but it's picking up every oxygen molecule coming in, and as he exhales, every CO2 coming out to let us know that every single breath how many calories he's burning. And you extrapolate that over a minute, then over an hour, 24 hour period, that's at this position, this is how many calories his body requires to maintain its, its energy production at that breath rate. So what we see when these individuals, especially when they're as fit as Garrett is, um, in a very, very high metabolic burn rate, he was able to actually efficiently consume about 14 and a half liters of oxygen per minute, what puts him at about 2,840, 2,848 calories at rest. Just like for them, I mean, in a, you know, 20 minutes worth of laps, it's like a fight. You know, even though everybody thinks that they're just on a bike and the bike's doing it, uh -uh. I mean, the adrenaline that the body goes through is dumping into the actual cardiovascular system and you see such a cardiovascular response to it. Oh yeah, a lot of people don't understand how much like the adrenaline gets, gets, you, oh. gets you going. Like, normally in the morning, start off, a little bit of coffee, whole beans, throw in the grinder. One of the interesting things about coffee and caffeine is that it's actually an appetite suppressor. So while I'm doing all this dieting and then a calorie deficit, it's actually super nice to be able to rely on coffee, caffeine a little bit to help me not feel so uh, desperate for food. I've never been a big fan of cooking, 
But after doing some of the meal prep myself and, and really paying attention to, to what I'm eating and what kind of ingredients I'm using and what's exactly going into my food, it's been really nice knowing all that stuff. And now when I go to restaurants, all I'm doing is thinking about what they're using for like all the oils and all the extra stuff. It's nice to have full control over, over what I'm doing. Also to have the plan from Chase, just to be able to look at it, not have to think about it and just making food. Let the pan heat up a little bit. I got uh, this beef tallow, grass-fed beef tallow that I use. It's what everybody used forever. And then we started using all these seed oils and whatnot, which uh, I'm not a fan of at the very least. Again, I'm not a nutrition expert or dietitian whatsoever. Not, not advice. I'm just showing you guys what I do, so. And then pretty much like with all my food, uh, the only thing I ever put on it is sea salt. And I got this Redmond sea salt. Uh, from what I understand, it seems to be the, the purest or something like that, so, so yeah. That's it for seasoning. Scramble it up. The goal is 155, 155 pounds. That's it's like around 70 kilograms, I think. The last time I weighed myself, I was uh, a little bit heavier than, <laughs> than where I started, so. Sometimes when your body's deprived, it starts trying to, to hold on to what it has so that you don't end up you know, starving yourself. I'm gonna be struggling to get down there, but it's what we gotta do. How much fun is Garrett gonna have in the next two months? Well, he's probably gonna be miserable. So, <laughs> no, he actually loves this style of training. He loves tricking out his body, pushing himself to uh, limits that are not a lot of people are comfortable doing or want to do and watching him do it is really joyful because not a lot of people will take you know a stepwise approach that makes them feel uncomfortable and get comfortable with being uncomfortable yeah chase i mean i appreciate it but definitely not as easy as i would like it to be but nothing worth doing is is ever easy so i think the most difficult part about all of this is hanging out with my friends and just seeing them eat all this delicious food, oh, it just makes me mad thinking about it. All this delicious food that I wish I could eat, but I got my goal, I'm not gonna fail. I'm here to win. <laughs> Man, it sure beats the gym. That's for damn sure. <laughs> I love being out here at the moto track. It's uh, it's a different kind of training for me. Just getting on two wheels and and you know riding as fast as I can. It seems to uh, seems to help on the road racing side. Super high intensity. Uh, heart rate's really high. And also, I mean, out here the track's always changing. There's new lines to look for. And being able to adapt quick. Different situations like that. So um, yeah, for me it's uh, it's a big help. And and I really I really love being out here. One of the things I like to do is just keep my carb consumption only around high intensity activity. So normally like I'm not really eating too many carbs. I'm pretty I'm pretty low carb. It's just when I start doing some training stuff, whether it's motocross or running, cycling, anything like that, then I start to introduce some carbs. I like fast acting carbs. Like um, I got some raw honey here from from uh, around where I live, which is really nice. Uh, raw organic honey, just like all natural stuff, organic stuff. Uh, not processed at all. Carbs that I know my body can use uh, quick. And uh, and then I'm back to my low carb stuff after the workout. I got an electrolyte drink here. So getting some uh, some electrolytes. And uh, yeah, that's my fuel for, for when I'm out here training. The more active I am, day to day stuff, the more walking I do, whatever, the easier it is for me to maintain a lower body fat percentage. So got my gym not far away, a couple miles. Instead of driving there, why not just run, get a couple extra calories burned and help me reach my goal. The main thing that I, I like to focus on a lot when we look at body fat, is not only just what we see, which is on the outside, but certainly what's on the inside. Because there's a, a detrimental level that a lot of people have of body fat called visceral fat. It's very congestive to the organs, it robs them of oxygen. And so when we look at it, I like to kind of see patients that are anywhere under 10 ideally, maybe seven or less. To give you perspective here, uh, Garrett's at one. So <laughs> very limited amount of, of congestive 
uh, body fat around his organs. So as a trend we see over time, he does a fantastic job in season and certainly out of season um, to basically maintain a state of fitness that a lot of people just don't achieve uh, just because they don't have the consistency that Garrett does. I normally give myself like a minute 30, two minutes in between sets just to recover a little bit and it uh, seems to be working well for me. You know, a lot of people think that they can just train, 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 train. And I see a, con a considerable amount of overtraining in my practice because it's, it's one of those things that people think that they're really getting the results that they want for their goals by putting in the work. And that's true. You will not get an exercise physiology change in your body without putting in the work. But the problem is, is where you really see change is your ability to recover from the load of work that you give it. That's an, uh, it's an equation of what I said earlier of stress plus rest. And so if you don't have that right amount of, of rest and recovery, you're not going to see performance improvement. You're not going to see your body change physically or physiologically from year to year or season to season. Without nutrition, you're not going to have enough rest and recovery. So you can train all you want. You're never going to be able to see that super, super compensation or, or that super imposition of actual fitness improvement. So I know some of you guys might be asking, why do you keep talking about weight? Why does weight, why does rider weight even matter? Well, it comes down to physics. For sure, the more weight that I have as a rider, the more weight I have to accelerate, the, the bike has to accelerate, the more weight that I have to slow down, the more load that's on the tires in the middle of the corner. There's a fine line between too little and too, too much, but uh, about where I'm at is a good middle ground to try to get the best of everything. Not me, not me. things people ask me about a lot is arm pump and if it's something that I struggle with. Personally, no, it's not something that I've really struggled with except for if I'm not comfortable on the bike. So if I'm fighting the bike and I'm having to really wrangle it, yeah, for sure I can struggle with arm pump. But I try to focus on just being as relaxed as I can with my arms, kind of let the bike do its thing. But again, like mainly the stuff I'm training in here is going to be legs and core. And when I'm doing pull-ups, for sure that activates my biceps a little bit, but that's as close as I get to training arms. So I don't train arms whatsoever. All right, here we are on the mat section. I'm gonna do some, uh, some core, really get that core activated. Build up some strength while we listen to this. <laughs> One muscle that's pretty important for motorcycle races are these are lats right here because we're really pulling on the bars trying to counter steer the bike to get it to change directions especially tracks like Aston where there's just a ton of chicanes you really want to have strong lats to help change direction as fast as possible <gasps> Welcome back to the kitchen. I'm your host, Chef Boy RG, and here today, gonna make some lunch for you. All right, so here we got today uh, lunch. We got some ground beef. We also have this uh, ancestral blend ground beef, which has uh, beef liver and beef heart in it. Animal organs are really nutrient dense and have a lot of bioavailable vitamins and minerals. And so I tried to, uh, to get as much as I can. Of course, everything's organic, everything's grass fed, and we got some raw, a little bit of raw cheese that I'm gonna sprinkle on top too. So let's get going, let's work on it. So as you might notice, not too many vegetables in my diet, and that's actually kind of by design. Um, I don't really have anything against vegetables, but I've been following an animal-based diet for the last 12, 13 months, and it, I feel great. It works really well for me, and also I've been getting my, my blood checked every three, three months just to see how things progress, and uh, everything looks good in my case. So it doesn't mean it works for everybody, but uh, it seems to be working really well for me, and that's, that's all that matters. So. so like I said, just sea salt for the only, uh, the only seasoning. Cut. 
So the, the animal-based diet, the main four things that I'm eating is meat and organs, uh, raw honey, raw dairy products, and fruit. With that, get a ton of uh, bioavailable vitamins and minerals, really good source of carbs from the, from the honey and fruit, and it seems to keep everything ticking over nice. I'm allowed six ounces of this stuff. It's not a ton, but it's, it's enough. All right, so then we're gonna take that. I just take uh, like a spoonful of spicy guac. Once you mix it up, it looks like dog food a little bit, but the taste actually is, is pretty good in my opinion. And like I said, food is, is fuel and nothing more at the moment. So I'm not here for, uh, for enjoyment, I'm here for results. And this gets them done. It can be difficult to maintain a good weight for me. I feel like I'm somebody that puts on weight quickly, whether it's muscle or fat. And I'm kind of a guy that lives on the extreme spectrum. I'm either all in on diet, training, all that stuff, or I'm completely out, where I'm eating whatever I want, sitting on my ass all day. I need, I'm somebody that needs some structure, I need a plan, I need something to follow. It really helps keep me in line. It was coming, I knew it was coming, but here we are. I'm not as confident as I would like to be. Chase, no matter what happens, just be easy on me, bro, please. <laughs> Yeah, let's go ahead and trim everything down like you were before. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm nervous, so I don't, uh, I don't really know what I'm gonna be at. I kinda... You're gonna be lighter, God, I can I'm tell. Trying to, uh, trying to guess. For some individuals, like Garrett, his body type and his genetics allow him to have better strength, have better endurance at a lower body fat percentage. And for him, in the off season, as we're seeing, I mean, he's at 6%. So could he get to 4%? Possibly, but trying to maintain that 4% for long, long periods of time, we could see a reduction in overall performance. We may even see maybe a reduction in overall his immune response if it gets too low. So we wanna maintain, probably for him, somewhere between that five and 8%. For most people, I'll say, depending on the athlete that they are, they wanna kinda of be between that 10 and 12% range for optimal performance optimal aesthetics, optimal health. But I will say, you know, it really depends on the genetics of the individual. Measuring your weight. Do not grab the handle yeah. or move. Good deal. All right, well. I'm, I'm happy, happy mm -hmm. with that. <laughs> yeah, 157 and a half, that's awesome. Getting when you're at the body fat percentage range that you are, you don't have much wiggle room. That's what we talked about in that previous, yeah, you know, yeah, sit down yeah. was that can we do it without sacrificing muscle? I think it's. Uh, I think this is about as you know, as good as I can be. I was saying 155 as like my main goal, but I, honestly, I think if I can stay around like this or 160, I think that's gonna be that's gonna be decent. Well, uh, thanks for you. thanks for all the uh, the help and everything. It's kind of a fail. Like it's kind of a not fail. really. I wanted to get to that to that number, but yeah. at the end of the day, it's just a number. I'm when you get you get sub, you know. When you maintain like you've always been, you see here it's six, 5.9, 6.6, and of course this one here has shifted because of what your muscle did. When you're in those body fat percentage ranges, those are, that's tough to maintain. You know, it just goes to show the consistency of your lifestyle, your training, your nutrition, all that kind of stuff. There's really no wavering. Ah, oh, damn it. No, it was a fail, Chase. I'm mad, I am mad. But I know we did have a short time frame, so I'm not super worried about it. And I know that also I got a month until the season starts, so I got plenty of time to keep at it, keep on my diet, keep, uh, keep training as hard as I can, try to get that, that 155 goal. And I mean, yeah, it's not gonna win me any races, I would say, let's be, let's be straight up, but it's something that's gonna make me feel good, gonna get me good in the head, and I think less weight on the bike is, gonna, is also gonna help that BMW soar down the straight. Big thanks to Chase Banks for all of his help. I mean, the guy knows so much about all this. It wasn't always fun, but I did learn a lot, and a lot of these lessons I'll take with me for the rest of my life to try to be a fit and healthy person no matter what I'm doing. What is up guys? Thank you for watching this far into the video. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you liked the video, please give it a like, subscribe. It really helps give us some motivation to keep making these videos, so we appreciate that. 
If you have any questions, ask them below and I will do my best to answer them even though I am not educated in any of this. <laughs> I'll, uh, maybe I'll ask Chase and then Chase will give me the answer and I'll put it down below. So um, yeah, appreciate you guys and uh, see you in the next video. There is one coming soon. I don't know if you saw that, uh, that dry track footage in the video, but uh, got another one coming up real soon. So looking forward to seeing you guys soon.